First of all, we're going to look at solving systems by substitution, or using the substitution method for solving a system of equations. Okay? In the substitution method, we're going to solve we're going to solve one equation for one of the variables. For one of the variables. Then substitute. The new expression, I probably poorly planned this, new expression and we'll substitute that new expression into the other equation. The grand idea is to take two equations with two different variables and to be able to rewrite one equation with only one variable. It's the big idea. Okay. Solve one equation for one variable, then substitute in that new thing into the other equation so we have now one equation with one variable and solve. I want to solve this first system by substitution. Let's find an equation that we can easily and quickly solve for one of the variables. What one do we see that we can solve for one of the variables, like right now? Alex? The second one, you subtract y. And like the second one. Positive. We can solve the second one for y pretty quickly by just adding 2x to both sides. <clears throat> so let's rewrite this as, instead of negative 2x plus y equals 4, let's rewrite this as y equals positive 2x plus 4. We'll solve for one of the variables. In this case, we'll solve for y. <coughs> Once you know what y is, we're going to take this new expression for y and go and plug it in for y. Into the substitute what y is into the other equation. So when we get ourselves a new equation, it looks like 3x. plus 2 times what y is. y is 2x plus 4. And this whole ex equation equals 1. So we'll take one equation, solve for y. Solve for one of the variables, the one that's easiest. In this case, y was pretty easy. Once we know what that variable is, plug it in to the other equation for that same variable. And now we have one equation with only x's. So take this, distribute, do whatever you got to do to figure out what x is. So let's see, how about 3x plus 2 times 2 is 4x plus 8 equals 1. Combine like terms, you can say 7x plus 8 equals 1, 7x equals negative 7, x is therefore negative 1. Okay. Once you know what x is, how are you going to figure out what y is? Plug it back in and figure out what y is then. And, and this method is kind of nice because we already solved for y in one of them. So take x, plug it in for y, and let's finish solving this and get Say, therefore, y is equal to 2 times negative 1 plus 4. y equals, let's see, negative 2 plus 4 is negative 2. Positive 2. Positive 2. So then, graphically, what's, if, we're, if we're looking at a graph, what's the solution of a system? What do we look for when we, when we, if we were to solve this by graphing? What would you look for? Just on your graph, what would you identify as the solution? What would you point to as the solution? Where they intersect, right? They intersect at a point. So that means the solution to our system better be a point. So then what's the point that these two lines intersect? 
Louis? Negative 1, comma 2. The solution, therefore, is negative 1, comma 2. Minus 36 plus 3y's equals negative 2. y minus 36 equals negative 2. y equals 34. Did I do the minus work correctly? Though? How about negative 17 y's then? So then that means y is negative 2? Okay. So y is negative 2. Then take negative 2, plug it back in for y, for y in the x equation, and end up with what? Negative 5 times negative 2 is 10 minus 9. x is 1. So then our coordinate, the solution is the coordinate 1, comma, negative 2. Well, substitution is not the only method. In fact, there's another powerful method called the elimination method. Okay? If substituting is not the way to go, then we can also use elimination. Okay? And elimination method is actually something we're going to be using a lot tomorrow, and we're going to be using the same ideas and concepts when we talk about matrices later. In particular, elimination is just that. We're going to multiply. The idea of elimination is to multiply one equation, one or both equations through by a constant. And you're going to choose the constant so that so that when you add the equations together one variable is eliminated <laughs> 56 divided by 14 is a whole number. It's exactly 4, I believe. It's exactly 4. Well, if you know what y is, now let's go back and find x. If you know what y is, choose one of the two equations, whatever one looks easier, and plug in 4 for y and find x. Uh, which one looks better? Which one looks like something we want to do? Top one? Sure. So we have 8x plus 2 times y, which is 4, equals 4. Okay. 8x plus 8 equals 4. 8x equals negative 4. x is negative 1 half. So the solution to the system equations is therefore... What is it? Negative one half, comma four. Let's see. Multiply by three. That gives us nine x plus nine y equals negative forty five. Keep the same equation. Five x minus nine y equals three, and add them together. 9 plus 5 is 14x's, 0, and negative 42. So if 14x is equal to 42, negative that is, what's x? Therefore x is, I think, negative, yeah, negative 3. And if you know what x is, plug it back in. So first of all, let's create a sys let's create an equation that models the cost. Okay? So let's see. Uh, the costs of our pizzas are what? Four for smalls. So how about we say like four times s for small? And the cost of large pizzas is six for larges. Six for larges. 
and we spent an entire of a, a total of eleven hundred dollars making pizzas. Would be an equation that models these costs. I also would like to model the revenue or how much we make. So how much money do I make for a small pizza? Twelve. So I also make twelve dollars for every small pizza. Plus I make fifteen for every large pizza. And I brought in twenty nine ten. So if I want to work backwards and figure out how many smalls were sold, how about we equation of the revenue by two? Okay, we want to get the L's to line up. Uh, I like that. I like shooting for the number thirty. So if we multiply this at the top by five, it gets us to thirty L. And then the bottom, if we multiply by two, we'll get to thirty L as well. But the problem is, is that when we add thirty to thirty, you get sixty. Not zero. Also, you could subtract them. I, I highly, highly, highly recommend picking one of them to be negative and and just adding the negatives. Okay. So how about we multiply the bottom then by negative two? You could also negative five and positive two would also work. You'll get the same answer. Okay. So then you end up with new equations of what of twenty s plus. 30L is equal to 5,500, and negative 24S plus negative 30L is equal to, ooh, this is a big one, 0, 2, 8, negative 5,820. 5, Add together, and then solve for S. You end up what? Negative Four s is equal to negative. What do we get? Negative three hundred twenty. Divide by four, and the small pizzas are what eighty. Therefore, the small pizzas sold are eighty. Bottom one, let's uh, to multiply the top equation by, say, how about negative 3? So we'll get our new equation is negative 6x plus 9y equals negative 12. Plus 9y equals negative 12. And then our original bottom one is 6x minus 9y equals 8. So then when we add these two equations together to eliminate, we get what? Zero, zero, and negative four. Is zero equal to negative four? No. So no, this is not a true statement. There are no solutions here. You get an inconsistent system. So if you get an inconsistent system, what do you know about those two lines? They're parallel. They're parallel. Okay. So we got like negative 4 equals negative 4, for instance. Would that be like the same line there? Mm -hmm. So then if those were to be equal, you eliminate all variables, and it's a true statement. That means they're the same line, which means they're overlapping. They're consistent dependent. And they have an infinite number of solutions. If you eliminate all variables, and they're the same. Okay. There's three more examples up here. You check them out. Um, there will be one, there's at least one of these have a, are consistent dependent. There are overlapping lines. Uh, you can kind of figure out which one it is for yourself when you multiply through. You go from there. Okay. Um, if you like more practice, you can solve these, and I'll come around.